Let's go ahead. Let's praise the Almighty God. Let's bless Him. Let's give Him glory. Give Him honor. Give Him adoration. Praise Him. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Ancient of Days. Thank you, Unchangeable Changer. Praise Him. Just keep on praising Him. Praise Him until He draws near to you. You must have a divine encounter today. Praise Him till He draws near. Give Him glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Amen. We give you all the glory we give you Ancient of days, thank you. Alpha, thank you. Omega, thank you. The beginning, thank you. The ending, thank you. The one who was, thank you. The one who is, thank you. The one who is to come, thank you. Almighty God, thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Counselor, thank you. Mighty God, thank you. Everlasting Father, thank you. Prince of Peace, thank you. The All in All, thank you. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you for what you did on Monday. 
Thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you for what you're about to do now. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We, your children, are gathered together to have an encounter with you. Father, please surprise us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Well, God always reserves the best in the last. So shake hands with one or two people and say, welcome to the best. <clears throat> and then you may please be seated. Revelation chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. Revelation 4, 10 and 11. And then we'll be reading Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 34. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that lived forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Mark chapter 5. From verse 25 to 34. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse, when she heard that when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be thou whole of thy plague. Tonight, when you leave this place, you'll be living in peace. You will be whole, physically whole, financially whole, and spiritually whole. The woman in this story examined herself and she was not satisfied with what she saw. Physically, she was bankrupt. I've been sick for 12 years, that's a long time. Getting steadily worse. I've been transferred from one doctor to the other. I know results. Let me start 
tonight by saying that in the name that's above every other name, every sickness that has been growing steadily worse in your life will end now. She also discovered she was bankrupt financially. She had spent everything she had. And she wasn't satisfied with that. All of you who listen to me today who are not satisfied with poverty, the tide will turn for you today. Now, I know there are some people who didn't say amen to that because they have a lot of money in the bank, so they are not poor. But I just want those people to remember that the Word of God says clearly that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children, children. So if you are not sure that all you have in the bank will last three generations, then when I say the tide is going to turn for the better for you tonight, you better say amen. And she, she also knew that she was under bondage. And what was happening to her was not natural. There's an enemy at work in her. And in the name of the one who is called the Lord of hosts, any one of us here today or listening to me now that is under the attack of any form of enemy, tonight your victory is certain. So the, the, the woman looked at herself and said, uh -uh. I'm not satisfied the way things are. Things can be better. Because she knew she was made for God's pleasure. She knew that her maker would not be pleased with her present situation. Just like we discussed on Monday. And so she chose that she was going to do something about it. That she was going to initiate a divine encounter. Jesus was passing by. There was a crowd there. And she just made up her mind. If the mountain won't come to Mohammed, Mohammed will go to the mountain. If the Almighty is not going to collide with me, I'm going to collide with him. Then she said, if I can just have an encounter with my maker, I know I will be made whole. The question is, was she right to have that kind of expectation? I'm going to share with you very briefly just a little bit of Bible study, and then you are going to do something again <laughs> that probably you've never done before. But I assure you in the name of the one who called me, this is one day none of us will ever forget. Take note. God 
is a king. In Isaiah 66 verse 1, Isaiah 66 verse 1, God said, Heaven is my throne. Throne implies kingdom. He said, I have a kingdom in heaven. Now whatever I say in heaven goes. Psalm 115 verse 3. Psalm 115 verse 3. Our God is in the heavens. And he does whatever he pleases him. Whatsoever pleases him in heaven, that's what he does. Two. God wants to rule and reign on earth. He has a throne in heaven. No problem there in heaven. But he wants to rule and reign on earth also. How do I know that? The Lord Jesus Christ, when he was teaching the disciples to pray, in Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9 to 10, Matthew 6 verse 9 to 10, he said, this is how you should pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. So God says, I want absolute control on earth also. So he decided to make you, and the you I'm talking about is you, and who is that you? <laughs> he decided to make you his ambassador. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. 2 Corinthians 5, 20. You are God's ambassador. I'm going to ask you to please be childlike this evening. Even if it's only for this one hour, forget how big you are. Become like a child. You're going to talk like a child. You're going to believe like a child. You're going to behave like a child. <laughs> and I'm sure if you think very deeply, you can hardly find a better life than that of a child. Before they cry, people begin to run up and down to attend to them. A child reigns in the family. Even as God blesses children, he will bless someone today. And so I want you to tell the fellow next to you, it may sound childish, but tell him or her, I am your excellency, you know. <laughs> I know it will be difficult at first. Say it again. Because I'm an ambassador of the Most High. So he decided, God decided, that he will make you a king. Or a queen, if you're a woman. It says, sir, where is that in the Bible? Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Revelation 1, 5 and 6. He has made us priests and kings. Why? Well, so that he can claim to be the king of kings. He is king. And he wants to 
be king of kings. So he decided to make you a king. Not just an ordinary king. And pay attention to these words. A king with power. Because in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4, the Bible tells us where the word of the king is, there is power. That is why, you know, we were talking about several things that God made. He made your hands to clap, he makes your leg to dance, he makes uh, everything that is within you to bless his holy name. We deliberately didn't mention the smallest part of your body, your tongue. He made your tongue to have power. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, Proverbs 18, verse 21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. There is power in your mouth. Tell the fellow next to you, I am your excellency. God said so. I am royalty. God said so. He made you so powerful that whatever you say is what's going to happen. Oh, for example, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, Genesis 2, verse 19, when God has created everything, he brought them to Adam. And said, okay, Adam, what do you want us to call this? And you know the rest of the story. Adam looked at this one and said, let this one be called a cow. God said, Thou shalt be called a cow. Let's call this one an elephant. He said, Elephant shall your name be. God says, Whatever I hear coming from your mouth, that's what I will do to you. <laughs> Numbers 14, verse 28. Numbers 14, 28. He told Moses, tell the people, as he has spoken in my ears, that's how I will do to you. Do I say some, do I hear somebody say loud and clear, the tide is turning for me today. For example, in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19 to 22, 2 Kings chapter 2, 19 to 22, there was a crisis in a town. And a man of God arrived. And the people ran to him, help us. You know the story. He asked them to bring salt in a new cruise. They collect, he collected that went to the source of their problem, poured the salt in, and made a decree. And said, River, you are healed. He said, no more barrenness. He said, no more death. And the Bible says, and the waters were healed. From that day forward, according to the word that Elisha said, I want you to be generous. Turn to two or three people around you and say, from now on, it will be well with you. (laughs) 
Now, why has God put so much power in your mouth? Because he made you in his image. He made you in his likeness. He made you to have dominion. According to Genesis chapter 1, from verse 26 to 28. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. And for you to be like him, not only in likeness, but in, not just in image, but in his likeness, since he rules by decrees, it will be his pleasure if you also rule by decree. In Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3, Genesis 1 from verse 1 to 3, he simply said, let there be light, and there was light. And according to Job chapter 22, Job 22 from verse 22 to 28, Job 22 from verse 22 to 28, he said, you go ahead and decree, and now we establish it. You say it, say it so that I can hear it. As soon as I hear what you have said, I will give it my backing. So he advised you, the you that I'm talking to. He said, when you open your mouth, and this is in Joel chapter 3, verse 10. Joel chapter 3, verse 10. Don't say, I am weak. Say, I am strong. Don't say, I am poor. Say it loud and clear. <laughs> That's not a bad beginning. Rich is good. But there are things better. There is wealthy. There is prosperous. There is flourishing. So open your mouth now and say the best. Say when you see a manche blocking your way, whatever that manche may be, Mark 11, 22 to 23. Mark 11, 22 to 23. You see, it is said, don't come running to me begging God, eh, look at this manche. Look at this man in my place of work who does not want me to make progress. Look at this one who is blocking my promotion. Look. Uh, 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 uh. Speak to the man. Open your mouth and say, man, move. He said, say it so I can hear it in my ear. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to tell stories tonight because this is our last night. <laughs> and I know what God has told me he wants to do. But there was this case of this one of my children who was living in the same house as this woman, not just a witch, but well-known witch. I mean, big, big people come to her for charms. And then in the night, my son will be praying 
pray in the spirit. At times, his friends will come. And because they were praying, they were disturbing this woman. And then my son came to me and said, there's this woman who's, who is uh, disturbing us and so on. I said, move her. He said, no, but me, both of us are tenants. Ah, move her. He refused. Then, for some time, I didn't see my son. The woman was troubling him. He was troubling the woman. So the woman reported him to one of the big policemen and said that uh, armed robbers were meeting in his place. So they came, they arrested him. But after some time, when they discovered that every night this boy was always praying, uh, they released him. But he had been beaten by, I mean, well, you, you don't want to know what our prisons are like. Uh, he has been beaten by all, all, all the things that can bite. So he came, his body full of rashes. So I said, what happened? And he told me. I said, I told you to move her. Uh, he said, I'm ready now. Ah, okay. And so she spoke. Told man things to move. Within days, the mountain has moved. <laughs> Tonight, open your mouth loud and clear and say, Mountain! Amen. 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 Don't worry. You, you, you will have time. You will have time. And I mean, some of you also remember the, the story of one of my sons in a town in Ondo State. He had a factory and was producing things. And then there was this herbalist with a little hut directly opposite the factory. And great men were coming to, to him there. And this herbalist was sacrificing human beings. So the customers discovered that uh, that particular section of the town Children were getting missing, so they, they were not coming to the factory. And I was visiting, and my son told me, I don't know what we are going to do. As this uh, herbalist with his hut under an Iroko tree, and uh, my factory is not doing very well. I said, is that so? Let's go there. We go there, I said, show me. Show me the Iroko tree and the something down there. And he showed me. I stretched my hand. There is a God called the Lord of hosts. He didn't say joke with the devil. He didn't ask you to beg the devil. What did he ask you to do? But to resist the devil. Anyway, so we prayed. Three days later, thunder fell. The Iroko tree caught fire. Everything under the Iroko tree vanished. And suddenly the factory began to prosper. We say it loud and clear. Mountain! <laughs> it 
he didn't ask you to tolerate demons. No. He asked you to cast them out. How do you cast out demons? Not by beating them. Not by beating them with broomsticks. You speak. Demons, get out. They have to obey. He has you to resist the devil. He wants you to shame the devil. He cast the devil out of heaven. You are his ambassador. He asks you to receive the devil, so the devil will flee. How many of you will agree with me, at least those of you here on this campground, for just one minute? I want you to decree. Any accomplice of the devil on this campground, vanish. Say it loud and clear. Now, thank you. <laughs> now, I know there are many of you in various locations. I use the campground as a point of contact because, well, that's where I live. Now, you are going to say, every agent of the devil In my house, in my place of work, in my congregation, disappear. Open your mouth and say it loud and clear. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to have time. I just want us to round up the Bible study and then be able to get into action. I told you we must become like babes. You know, yesterday I asked you to praise God. Some of you did. Some of you didn't do it the way it should be done. Because we are big. But in Matthew chapter 21 verse 16, Matthew 21 verse 16, he said, out of the mouth of babies, thou hast perfected praise. You must learn to praise him like babies. I, I, I told us, I think it was during the first Sunday of the year. How come God loves praise so much? Because that's one of the reasons why he created you. Before he created you, Everything he made in Genesis chapter 1. Because you were not around to praise him, he was praising himself. When the first day, when he had finished the work of the first day, he said, This is good. The second day, This is good. Third day, This is good. He was saying, If nobody is praising me, I will praise myself. Then on the sixth day, he made you. 
I said, ah, now this is very good. Meaning what? Here comes somebody who will praise him. Oh, they may say, Betty, he has a mighty mass choir in heaven. Oh, yes. Billions of angels. Oh, yes. But those ones are praising him without a choice. They praise him without a choice. But he made you with the ability to choose. So that when you praise him, aha, somebody is now praising him out of choice. That's why he said, I dwell in the praise of my people. And when you become like a baby, and you praise him like a child, if you read your Bible in Psalm 8, verse 2, Psalm 8, verse 2, he said, Out of the mouth of babies and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength. Not praise now, strength. Meaning what? You praise him, you get strength. You give praise to him, you get strength. Because you are going to need strength for what is about to follow. Because whatever you decree tonight, God is going to establish it. So, first of all, before we go now, as we will soon be going forward into action. The Bible says when you are born again, you become a baby. That's why the Bible says you are born again. That's why the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, as a newborn babe. Desire the sincere milk of the word of God. If you are truly born again, you become like a baby. You have seen big people who became truly born again. You see them praising God. You see royal fathers dancing all the way to the ground. You see vice chancellors of university dancing all the way to the ground. They know what they are doing. You praise him perfectly, you become strong perfectly. You praise him perfectly, you can decree perfectly. So before we, become, we, we begin to behave like babies, just for some minutes tonight, if you are not yet truly born again, if you are not a child of God, you can't be a baby. You must be born again. So if you have not surrendered your life to Jesus to the extent of becoming like a baby. If you are not sure of your salvation, if pride is still holding you back, particularly when it comes to praising God, run forward to wherever is called the altar where you are situated. Come and give your life to Jesus Christ. Let him change you from within so that you become like a baby, a brand new baby. Then <laughs> out of your mouth will come perfect praise, and then you get perfect strength, and then you can decree childishly, 
and begin to see what is called miracles. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to count from one to seven. Come now, the Almighty God is waiting for you to save your soul, to transform you, to give you a brand new beginning. I'm counting now, one. Two. Your hand will soon be clapping. Your legs will soon be dancing. Oh, everything that is within you will soon be praising God. Your eyes will soon be beholding the glories of God. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay, thank you. Those of you who are already in front, wherever you are, cry to Jesus Christ. Tell him, save my soul. I want to be born again. I want to become like a baby in God. I want my life to become brand new. Forgive me, Lord. Let your blood wash away my sins. Receive me into the family of God today as a small baby in God. Cry unto him. Tell him I will serve you for the rest of my life. And all of us, let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them for about two minutes. Pray that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls. Pray that God will have mercy on them that his blood will wash away their sins. Let's talk to God. Praise him. Magnify his holy name. And intercede for these people. But the Savior who saved your soul will save their own souls also. Those of you in front, ask him to come and be your Lord and Savior. That we want him to come and dwell in you. That he, you will serve him. And you say bye-bye to a life of sin. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father and my God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. And thank you for these people that have come forward to surrender their lives to you. Please remember your promise that whosoever will come to you, you will know why cast out. They have come now. Father, please receive them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Write their names in the book of life. Receive them into the family of God. And from now on, when they cry unto you, please answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now I want to rejoice with those of you who have come forward. I want to assure you that from now, by the special grace of God, on a daily basis I'll be praying for you. So I want to know your names, your address, and your prayer requests. There are some counselors around you, and they will attend to you in a moment. For those of you who are here, you see someone carrying a placard to your left, follow him. It will lead you to where those people are waiting. They will take down the information I want, and they bring you back very quickly. Thank you, Father. And the rest of us, let us do what God created our hands to do, to clap for him. Let's clap for him. Let's clap for him. 
Let's clap for him so that our hands will never wither. Let's clap for him so that our hands will never be empty. Let's clap for him so that whatever we touch will prosper. Thank you, Father. Amen. So we're going to do one or two things very quickly. First, to show him that we are genuine babies in his hand. And I want you to know, no matter how old you are, you are a baby in the hand of the one who has been existing before the mountains were brought forth. The one whose name is the Ancient of Days. The one who never grows old. The one who is always the I am that I am. The one who had been wearing the same dress from everlasting to everlasting, wearing light. We're going to go before him like babies and praise him. We're going to praise him like we've never done before. You, the way you went about it yesterday wasn't, wasn't good enough. Just look at the way children will do it. Sing, dance, praise him. Just do it in a way that he will look down and say, all right, now you're a baby. And so I can carry you. So let's stand. And for a few minutes, let's just go ahead and praise God. Praise him like a baby. Sing unto him like a baby. Dance unto him like a baby. Jump if you have to jump. Just glorify him. Let him look down and see a baby perfecting praise. Use your tongue to sing unto him. Sing unto him a joyful song. Shout unto God. With the loud voice of triumph, clap unto him. Praise him like a baby. Give it to him. Magnify his holy name. Show him that you love him, you appreciate him, that you know you are made for his pleasure and you want him to be pleased. Oh yes, praise him. Dance to him. Magnify his holy name. Sing your own song unto him. If you don't have a song, shout unto him with a loud voice of triumph. Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. If you can't sing, you at least you can make a noise. Praise him. Adore him. Magnify his holy name. Praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Show him that is your daddy. Tell him I appreciate you. I know you are older than the oldest. I know you are higher than the highest. I know you are greater than the greatest. I know you are wiser than the wisest. And you, you are my all in all. You are my all in all. I praise you. I adore you. I glorify your holy name. There's no one like you. Oh, my Father, my God. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Oh, yes, I praise you. I don't care what anybody may think. I, you are the one I'm praising. You are the one I am adoring. If they want to look at me, let them look. Let them look so that when my miracles begin to burst forth, they will see where I was and where I'm going to be. Praise Him. Glorify His holy name. Oh yes, magnify the King of Kings, magnify the Lord of Lords, magnify the Ancient of Days, praise Him. 
Praise him. Give him glory. Give him glory today. Give him honor today. Give him adoration today. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, praise him. Praise him. King of glory. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. King of glory, praise him. Praise Jehovah, hallelujah. Praise him, praise him. King of glory, praise him. Praise Jehovah, hallelujah. The Makashi Kere Mokutunda. Rekere Mokuronde, Mokushi Kere Makatana. Siro Mokuronde, Mokushi Kere Mokutunda. Praise him, praise him. King of glory, praise him. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Rama Kashi Kiremokotunde. Kiremokotunde. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have praised Him. Now, with every strength that is in you, you're going to make decrees concerning yourself. You're going to say in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to remain whole for the rest of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. My prosperity will begin to blossom. In the mighty name of Jesus. Demons will never come near me again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every mountain blocking my way. Blocking the way of my people. Right now. Move. Go ahead, decree. Open your mouth. Say, I'm no longer weak. I am strong. I am no more poor. I am flourishing. I'm no longer under bondage. I am free. Every Monday, physical, move. Every Monday, financial, move. Every Monday, spiritual, move. From now on, I will mount with wings like an eagle. I will no longer crawl. I will move fast. I will accelerate. I will reach my goal. Help will come to me from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south, from heaven above. Oh, I will flourish like the palm tree. Things will get better and better for me every day. Oh, I will have wonderful testimonies. Testimonies of joy. Testimonies of success. Testimonies of progress. Testimony of overflowing anointing. 
Oh yes, I will do the works that Jesus did. I will do greater works than he ever did. Yes, I'm going to be a mighty vessel unto honor in the hand of the Most High God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to have dominion. Oh yes, I will reign supreme because the King of Kings has made me a king. And where the word of the king is, there is power. When I speak, power will follow. When I say word, my word will not fall to the ground. When I bind, it shall be bound. When I loose, it shall be loosed. Whatever I ask to come will come. Whatever I ask to go will go. I won't fall. I won't fail. I will serve God. Oh yes, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to end well. I'm going to end strong. It's going to be well with me. On a daily basis, I will have tremendous surge of power, tremendous overflow of anointing. Oh yes, I will serve God like never before. And serving God is going to be easy with me. It's going to get easier by the day. Oh, yes. I'm going to flourish like the palm tree. Because I'm planted in the house of the Lord. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, I decree Satan... Take your dirty hands off me. I decree, Satan, take your dirty hands off my children. I decree, Satan, take your dirty hands off my marriage. Take your dirty hands off the church of God. Take your dirty hands off my ministry. I decree, in the name that's above every other name, it shall be well with me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So shall it be. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Tonight I'm going to be decreeing. But in order that we may just do that decreeing and then you'll be going, maybe we should just give our offering first. After we have given our offerings, then I will go ahead and make some decrees. Glory be to God. So very quickly, let's take our offering. While you are taking the offering, let me remind you of a story. You know the story very well. A son of mine came, of mine came to me and said, Sir, I'm tired of my present job. I want a better one. So I've applied to a company. But I want to become their deputy managing director. I'm going for an interview tomorrow. I said, fine, let me pray for you. He said, no, don't pray. Speak a word. So I said, all right. The interview will go well. I said, amen. And he left. Following day, he came back. Very, very excited. Was it, what happened? He said, I prepared very hard for the interview. But when I got there, they asked me three questions. What's your name? I told them. What post do you say you want? I told them. And then they asked me, when can you start? I said, ah, congratulations. He said, no, daddy. Speak another word. So I said, okay. 
Your progress in that place of work will be rapid. He said, Amen. The following day, he came back trembling. What happened? He said, I got there. And when I arrived, they asked me to go to the boardroom where they interviewed me the day before. And they said unto me, young man, after you left yesterday, our managing director resigned. Are you ready for the post of managing director? I said, congratulations. He said, no, daddy, speak another word. So I said, okay. The one who has started the good work in you, we perfect it. Thank God, I believe some of you are hearing. The following day, he came back, trembling, almost, un almost unable to speak. What happened again? He said, I got back to the office, and they asked me to go to the boardroom. I got there. The same people that interviewed me said, young man, we have discovered the reason why our managing director resigned. He has got a job in another company where they doubled his salary. We don't want you to leave us, so we will double your salary. I said, congratulations. He said, no, daddy, speak another word. <laughs> so I said, you, you want to take the company from the owner? That kind of blessing. That you will say to God, this is becoming too much. Receive it right now. All right, take your offering, take your offering. We are running out of time. Take your offering, dance to the nearest basket to you, drop your offering, and then we will close. Over to you, Ben. Receive my praise, oh Lord. Oh Lord, receive my praise. 
about to speak a word. But before I do that, just to let you know that this is not a joking matter, I want you to decrease something to yourself. Make it something so big that only God can do it. Something extremely big just for one minute, decrease something to yourself. So that when it is done, you will remember tonight that, aha, yes, sir. Decrease something. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In the name that's above every other name, I hereby decree that which you have asked for is done. From now on, you will shout for joy. From now on, you will never know failure again. That person who is holding on to your miracle, will not be able to sleep tonight. The help that you need before the end of this week will come to you speedily. God will accept your offering. He will accept you. He will use your offering for his own glory. And he will give you a thousandfold returns. You shall be whole. Physically, you shall be whole. Materially, you shall be whole. Spiritually, you shall be whole. From this moment onward, God will use you for his glory. You will finish well. You will finish strong. You will serve the almighty God. Demons will see you and run. The devil will stay away from you. In the kingdom of God, you will not be missing. Go in peace. The almighty God will go with you. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have decreed it. 
Amen. Well, how many of you believe that it's already done? And then let me hear you shout the loudest hallelujah you ever shouted.